Hello everybody and welcome to the Organic Chemistry Lab series. Today we are talking about gas chromatography or GC for short. This video is about the practical aspects of how to use a gas chromatograph. The theory has already been explained in the corresponding video. So a classical gas chromatography setup is like this and as you can see you have a carrier gas reservoir, normally helium, you have a pressure regulator, a gas line that goes into the gas chromatograph. This is the gas chromatograph itself. So if you look at the front of the instrument, you can see the temperature of the oven displayed here. And you can see the injector port. So that's where you will inject your sample through a syringe. Your sample goes in this way. The column winds up in this direction, ends up here where the detector is. The detector will detect the signal and send it out to the computer for processing and display. To load your sample you will use a micro syringe and you will inject approximately one microliter of sample. This is a 10 microliter syringe. Like all syringes is composed of three parts. It has a needle, a barrel which is the glass part and a plunger which is this stainless steel part. Notice how thin and delicate the plunger is, so be careful not to apply too much force, otherwise you will bend the plunger and once, once it's bent, it will never be straight ever again and you throw out the whole syringe. The first thing you want to do is to rinse the syringe, normally with an organic solvent like ether. You want to do this for two reasons. Obviously because you want your syringe to be clean and second because you have a glass barrel and a stainless steel plunger. These are both hard materials, so they don't do, they don't get a very good seal against each other. The seal is actually made by the thin film of solvent that surrounds the plunger. So every time you use a syringe, you want to make sure that's wet with organic solvent. So you rinse the syringe with ether a few times and just out of safety, you want to do this in a few months. So you open the container and you draw some ether and you can eject it in the hood. Make sure when you push the plunger down to do it quickly but gently so you don't bend the plunger. When your syringe is clean and wet with organic solvent you are ready to load the sample. So you want to load your sample between two air bubbles. The technique to do that is you raise the plunger up to one with air and then you immerse the needle in your sample. You draw up with approximately two with your sample and then up to three or four with air. And if you notice, you will have your sample loaded in between two air bubbles. When you have your syringe ready and you are ready to make an injection, you want first of all check that the system says standby, which means the system is ready and just waiting for you to make an injection. This is the injection port and you want to introduce the needle in the injection port. You gently push, you will encounter some resistance because you are piercing through a rubber septum. You introduce all the way and then you gently tap out spacebar. This is what the GC computer interface looks like, it's a gas chromatogram. So you have intensity on the y-axis and retention time on the x-axis. So our analysis is now complete. We see four peaks and to stop it we press end on the keyboard and you see that the peaks actually get a red circle, meaning that they have been recorded and detected by the software. So if you see the first peak is ether, is the solvent that we use to wash the syringe. And then we have three more peaks. We injected a three component mixture, so that's what we would expect. And they are respectively hexane, heptane and octane in increasing retention time as hexane is the lowest boiling point solvent so it has the lowest retention time heptane is in the middle and octane has the highest boiling point so it has the highest retention time if you look at your results window 
where there's a table that summarizes your analysis, you see that you have the two pieces of information that you most need, that is retention time and area. And you will see four values, one for each peak. The first one is ether, then the second hexane, heptane, octane, and then you see the total area. Normally you want to ignore the ether peak because as we know, it's just the solvent we used to rinse the syringe. You want to save your gas chromatogram and normally it's saved as a PDF. So to do that, you go to file, print, and it comes up with this window and it says QP, Qt PDF view and the channel number one. You click on print and it comes back with the dialog window. You will want to save on the desktop and you can give it a file name, whatever you want, and then you save it. I hope this was helpful and enjoy your lab.